What is up guys, Jarv here, back today jumping into Destiny 2. Now in our video today, we're taking a look at decrypted data and Ether, two brand new currencies introduced with Season of the Splicer. So if you want to find the fastest way to get your hands on these two critical currencies, then be sure to stick around and enjoy the video. If you do enjoy the video, be sure to leave a comment and rating down below and subscribe for more Destiny 2 content. But without further delay, guys, let's jump into the video. Another new season and more currencies to chase and farm inside Destiny 2. With the launch of Season of the Splicer, we saw the introduction of decrypted data and also Ether, which are critical to the gameplay loop introduced this season via Override, the new six player match made activity. The idea behind this video today is to show you the fastest ways to get your hands on both of these currencies so you can repeat that loop as fast as you possibly can, which will allow you to fully upgrade your Splicer gauntlet. This is very similar to the hammer approving from Season of the Chosen, however unlike last season, you can almost fully upgrade your Splicer Gauntlet with none of the unlocks being time locked over the course of the season. So to get your hands on those new mods that are available from the Splicer Servitor over in the Helm, you'll need to level them up. And in order to do this, you'll need to unlock as many upgrade nodes as you possibly can. So to start off, we're going to kick off with Decrypted Data. This is key to upgrading your Splicer Gauntlet, but also focusing the Umble Engrams for the season. Please be aware that both the Umble Engrams and the Splicer Gauntlet use the same currency. So be be sure to hold off focusing any Umbral Engrams until you've fully upgraded your Splicer Gauntlet. Because they share a currency, if you do focus Umbral Engrams, it takes you a lot longer to upgrade some of the best upgrades, but also carry more Ether. And the more Ether you can carry, the more you can run the Override, and the more decrypted data you can earn. Now to get decrypted data from the Override activity, you need to have a key code. And this will allow you to open a special chest at the end of the activity. Other than that though, what are the other best sources for decrypted data in Destiny 2? Well, since the introduction of seasonal challenges, these were a key focus last season, offering additional currency and gold needed for the hammer approving. And the same can be said for this season's seasonal challenges too. Each week there are two seasonal challenges which offer you large amounts of decrypted data. This week it was Hello World and Maximum Override and if you can complete these it will give you a nice kickstart to upgrading your Splicer Gauntlet. Now as well as these seasonal challenges you can also get some from your season pass as well. You'll find these on the premium track so you need to have the premium track pass and you'll find bundles of decrypted data at 2, 12 and 32 on the premium pass track. Now with each of these offering 100 decrypted data each time, then potentially you have 300 additional decrypted data waiting for you on your season pass. Now these aren't the only sources for decrypted data inside Destiny 2. In fact, there's another source that you can find inside the override activity. If you make your way through the activity as you normally would, once you reach the final boss encounter, there is a small chance for an additional add to spawn called the Network Anomaly. This is a very tanky yellow bar goblin. If you work together with your fire team, then this can offer up to 30 additional decrypted data. I've only ever seen this spawn once throughout the entire time that I've been running Override, and I've been running this very often since the start of the season. So as and when you reach the boss encounter, be sure to check the arena first to make sure this network anomaly is not hiding away and keeping that decrypted data to himself. Now, if you're enjoying the video and want to see more like this, be sure to leave a comment and rating down below and consider subscribing for more Destiny 2 content. So that's an overview of all the sources for decrypted data. This moves us nicely on to the next key currency, which is Ether. Now, Ether is absolutely key as you'll need this to get key codes. And these key codes are what you need to use at the end of the override activity. This helps complete the entire gameplay loop, but you'll need to be able to earn this very easily to ensure that you're getting the most out of the override activity. Now, if you inspect your Splicer Gauntlet over in your quest tab, this will give you a clue to the best sources to gain Ether on any given day. Now, it says here that you need to complete playlist activities, public events, and defeat combatants anywhere in the system to gather Ether. And each day there's an activity which grants an Ether bonus. Now, at the time of making this video, this was in Strikes, making it one of the best sources for Ether on this given day. Now, if you choose to run Strikes outside the playlist, you can still earn Ether from defeating any combatants as you work your way through. However, you won't get a bonus upon completing the Strike itself. Now, to help ensure you're defeating as many combatants as you possibly can, I highly recommend running a War Mind Cell build throughout this Strike playlist. To make the most of this, you'll need a Seraph or Ikelos weapon, either the SMG or shotgun, or even the hand cannons are great alternatives, and all of these are available from the World Loot Pool too. So if you haven't got one in your inventory already, then you have a chance for them to drop from pretty much any legendary engram. Now as for the mods themselves, Wrath of Rasputin, Rage of Rasputin, and even Power of Rasputin, are all fantastic choices. So as long as you have some of these on your armor pieces too, then Warmind Cells will be a very easy thing to generate. 
These are very powerful and help you clear low tier ads in the shortest time possible. And the more ads that you can clear and defeat, the more potential you have to earn ether. Now, if you do complete strikes in the playlist, you will get a huge bonus upon strike completion. Now, this was on a day that granted a strike bonus and granted up to 76 on a single completion. Now, Nightfall strikes also offer around 75 for a single completion. And as of the time of making this video, Crucible and Gambit are currently offering 50. However, these two activities do not have the daily bonus applied. Now, as well as offering 50 per completion, you also get one additional ether for each Guardian you defeat. So if you'd like to slay out inside the Crucible or like to jump in with your team into Gambit, then there is some great potential there to earn large amounts of ether. Now, whilst the playlists seem like the best place to earn ether, in fact, public events are the best method that I've found to earn ether in the shortest time possible. Normal public events will offer 10, but heroic events will offer 25. Now, heroic public events are very easy to trigger and you'll find them almost always available inside the European Dead Zone. And from the footage that you can see playing out right now, it's much better to run heroic public events as a solo guardian. By running solo, it does offer you the opportunity to double dip on heroic public events. Now, if you're new to Destiny, double dipping refers to loading back into the same instance shortly after completing your public event. Now, if you were able to complete your event quicker than, say, someone else on another server, then you have a chance to load into another instance where the public event is still taking place, giving you another opportunity to get the rewards from the chest at the end. Now, with each chest granting 25 ether for completing a heroic public event, this gives you the potential to earn 50 ether in little under 90 seconds. So with this in mind, you can run just two public events and you're already have enough ether for a single key code and it's with that key code you can jump into the override activity to earn loot but also more importantly more decrypted data now with ether being such an important currency and as it has a cap on the amount that you can carry at any one time which you can upgrade as you gradually unlock nodes for your splicer gauntlet it's almost a currency that you don't need to afk farm for afk farming is a long and easy way to do it but if you're looking to grind this out as quickly and efficiently as possible while still enjoying the game then jumping into heroic public events is by far the best option now as we mentioned earlier the european dead zone has public events up pretty much all the time and if you're running solo then double dip and then will offer you double the rewards now as for override itself there are four variants of this activity which will unlock week over week each of these having two variants the variant we're seeing right now is the normal variant and later in the season there will be a corrupted version with taken taking hold inside the vex network so be sure to keep those peepers peeled for more details i'll be sure to keep you up to date here on the channel but be sure to let me know your thoughts on that bombshell down in the comments below so there we have it the best and easiest way to earn both decrypted data and ether inside destiny 2 if you've enjoyed this video be sure to leave a comment and rating down below now if you want to see more hints tips and guides on destiny 2 then be sure to check out one of the two videos you see here in these cards for further destiny 2 content i'm gonna jump back into the game as always guys and i will catch you all again very soon